you know this, your source code runs perfectly fine on your notebook, but your users are complaining about bugs. In this video, I'll show you three ways how to containerize your application so that you face exactly the same issues as your users. Hey, it's Stefan from Deep Data Ocean, where we help you making your software development professional. If you are new here, make sure to click the subscribe button below and all the links I mentioned in the video you will find linked in the description. So let's jump into it. Containerization is the most important thing to assure that your app shows the same behavior no matter where you run it. Using containerization in your app assures that you can reproduce all the bugs reported by your users on your notebook. With this you can save lots of time and the quality of your software will increase. And make sure to stick around to the end of the video for the bonus. In the bonus I'll show you how to configure your Java Spring Boot application running in a container for different environments using your application YAML and environment variables. So let us have a look into the Docker CLI now. So we're having an app.jar, a Java application, that we want to get started within a container. So for this we firstly need to create a Docker image that contains the jar. And we do this by creating a Docker file, which is something like a recipe, so that Docker knows how to create the image. We can then use the docker build command to create the image based on the Docker file. To start the container, we can then use the docker run command that takes the image and starts it as a container. So the image creation and the container is running on a local docker. We also have a docker registry that hosts completed images so that it can be run afterwards based on the storage on the registry. We can then use the docker push command to push the image on the local docker to the docker registry. We can then pull the image by using the docker pull command to get it from the registry down to the local docker. Let us now have a detailed look into all the files on the PC. So let me show you the docker file firstly. This is our docker file containing of four lines. The first line of a docker file is always the from line which basically tells docker which base image to use. So this base image contains OpenJDK 11 so that we can later on start our Java app within the container. So in order to be able to start the app, we need to have the app.jar copied into the image, which will be done by the second line. And then with line number three, we are telling him, we are telling Docker that our app has a listener on port 8080, so that we want to have this port forwarded to the container. And the entry point tells Docker what to do when starting or when running the container based on the image. It shall run the Java command with the dash jar and app.jar is the parameter. So let me then create the image based on the jar file using the docker build command. So the dash means please start it in the current directory where the docker file is located and tag it with the tab app and the version number 0.1.0. So this now downloads firstly the OpenJDK base image and copies the jar file into it and uh, creates the entry point. So then we can check it or we can see what we have using the docker images command which lists all the images on the local registry. So if we want to push it to a registry afterwards we have to tag it basically with the name of the registry. So this is the path to my local registry which is listening on port 8085 and this is the path within the registry. So let me do this. So now we've tagged it. Let me show you the new tag so we're having a new line saying we have now a repository tagged with the entire path which we can use now to push it to the registry and the docker push command takes the tag as the parameter now we have it on the registry and we can now use the docker pull command to download the image back from the registry to the local docker we can check this now and see, well, here we've got the guy. So the second way 
To create Docker Dim images is Gradle. You can use Gradle and specifically the Gradle JIP plugin coming from Google to create Docker images and push them to a registry. So basically what I've done here, I've just took the build Gradle file and I added another plugin, which is the JIP plugin. And it told him, please use this base image again and now tag it with, with the image to push it to the registry. We can then use the Gradle build JIP docker build command to create a local docker image. So this is just a way to show you that we really have it locally. And if we now want to create the image and push it to the registry, so we can use the Gradle JIP command to create it. Quite easy, right? So the advantage of using this JIP plugin for Gradle is that the users can just enter a normal Gradle command. Like they built the code, they can use the same technique to push it to the registry, which makes it quite easy for them without knowing anything about the Docker CLI. The third way to create Docker images is Maven. So I'm using Maven here and again the JIP plugin from Google. So here you see the POM XML. So we have to configure the plugin, which is exactly here. So basically we're doing exactly the same. We're saying the from image is again OpenGDK. And the image that we want to save it as, so the, the tag basically is again the name of my local uh, Docker registry. And here we again have the allow insecure registries set to do, which basically means that I'm allowing the plugin to use my registry, which does not support SSL. We can then use this Maven JIP docker build command, create the image locally and push it to the registry. And again, here we have to send send credentials over HTTP since I don't support SSL in my local registry. In the beginning, I've promised you a bonus. I'll show you now how you can easily configure your have a Spring Boot app so that the same container can be run on different environments like dev, test or production. So as you can see here in our application property files, we have our attributes. So for example, the, the, springs, the spring data source URL, which goes to localhost with the root, with root as the username and, and the password. When we're running this locally on the PC, the application properties will be used to run the Java Spring Boot app. If we want to start this Docker image now against the database on the server, maybe the, the development database, using a different user and a different password, we can set environment variables and just overload the values here. So we're having something like spring data source URL in uppercase and up with uppercase letters and underscore, which will override this spring boot parameter spring.datasource.url. And this mapping between the lowercase and the uppercase is just done by Java Spring Boot Magic. In the same way, we're just overwriting the data source username which was root early and is now db user. And again, we're using it uppercase with the underscores. So executing this Docker command, we'll have a Docker container running against the development database, not against the local database any longer. Containerization will definitely make your app better. But is this good enough to implement professional software development? Certainly not. If you want to learn what else you need to know to really implement professional software development, click now to apply for our 100% free strategy session. We'll show you what else you need to do to implement professional software development in your organization.